so good to see so many of you out today on this third Sunday in the month of March as we prepare ourselves as we march on to Resurrection Sunday. You know, I've been uh, thinking about that thing and how to prepare myself. And I, I, and I had to think about that thing. Every day is a resurrection day. When I get up and I can feel my arms and my legs and my feet and my toes. I've been revived and awakened to a new day. So, so as I prepare for that great getting up day where Jesus rose, I, I look forward to that day when he comes again and calls all of us up. And we get caught up in the middle of the air to meet him up in the air. So, so I, I'm rejoicing that God has made a way for us and it has called us to be his own. Let us stand together and go to God in prayer. Father, it's once more we come before you as humble as we know how, realizing if it had not been for your grace and mercy, where would we be? So Father, we come to praise and honor you for all that you've done, how you kept us through all the days of our lives and how you have set forth a, a plan that we may not understand, but we follow you, Father. Yes. So if you would open our eyes that we might see and that we might comprehend what you want for us to do this day, Father. Yes. We pray for those that are sick among us, Father, that you would raise them up one more time, yes. that they might praise your name. Yes. We pray for those who govern over us, Father, that they might make the right decisions, that we might have a peaceable life, Father. Yes. But whatever happens, Father, we want to put our trust in you, yes. that no matter what comes or what goes, we serve a God that loves us and that has prepared a place for us, Father. Thank you, Father. We pray now that you would come into this service, that it brings you glory and honor. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. amen. You may be seated. The choir is gonna come with a selection, then we'll have the responsive reading. I'm lifting up a holy hand. I'm lifting up a holy hand. I'm lifting up a holy hand up to you. When praise is over, blessings come down. Spread out God's word all around. Yes, all well, I'm lifting up. Lifting up holy hands up to you. When praises go up, blessings come down. Spreading God's word all around. Father, I stretch my hand to to you well I'm lifting up holy hands yes I'm lifting up holy hands yes I'm lifting up holy hands up to you when praises go up blessings come down Thee. No other help 
luck to you Well, I'm lifting up holy hands Yes, I'm lifting up holy hands Yes, I'm lifting up holy hands Unto you Holy hands unto you. When praises go up, blessings come down. Spread God's word all around. Yes, all around. Sponsored breathing will come from number. 549 in the back of the hymnals, number 549. It's entitled God's Providential Care. It comes to us from Psalms 91. And it reads, He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortune. My God, in Him will I trust. Surely He shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence. He shall cover thee with His feathers, and under His wings shall thou trust. His truth shall be thy shield and thy buckler. Thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night nor for the arrow that flies by day. Nor for the pestilence that walks in darkness, nor for the destruction that awaits at noonday. A thousand shall fall at thy side, and ten thousand at thy right hand, but it shall not come nigh thee. Only with thy eyes shall thou behold and see the rewards of the wicked. Because thou hast made the Lord, which is my refuge, even the Most High, thy habitation. There shall be no evil befall thee, neither shall there be any plagues come nigh thy dwelling. For he, he shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee in all thy ways. They shall bear Thou shalt tread upon the lion and adder, the young lion and the dragon shall thou trample under feet. Because he has set his love upon me, therefore will I deliver him. I will set him on high, because he has known my name. He shall call upon me, and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble, and I will deliver him and honor him altogether. With long life will I satisfy him and show him my salvation. Amen. We, we want each and every one of you to know that as pastor, I am very thankful for all that you did last Sunday as we celebrated my 16th year here. To those who helped in the kitchen and the pastor's aid and all of those who, who, who helped to make it a success, we thank you so much. Now we have our announcement by Sister Charlotte Timberlake. Good morning. Good morning. Do we have any visitors here with us today? If so, would you please stand? My name is Wayne uh, Alton Parker, and this is my wife, Jackie uh, Francis Parker. And we're visiting from, uh, from Maryland. And, uh, I always tell people where I'm from, and some of them have never heard of Ruth Moore, but they have heard of Robert Spall, Robert Cook, and those characters. But 
I told them, we have some of the best singers, pushers, and everything else here. And I'm a member of Shallow Baptist Church. And my pastor is, is Wallace Charles Smith. And he's from Philadelphia. And uh, I'm so glad to be here. And thank you. Amen. And it was great seeing both of you last night. On behalf of Reverend Wayne Johnson and the Solo Missionary Baptist Church family, we extend a heartfelt welcome to you. And we do hope you come back and worship with us again. Thank you. Let us remember our sick and shut-in members and keep them in your prayers. And I spoke to my sister last night, Mildred Waller. She had been in the hospital. She's, she's getting better, but she has a long ways to go. So. The announcements are as follows. <coughs> Celebrating Women's History Month. Mrs. Perling Biddings and Mrs. Adame Mitchell, they're having a stew, turkey legs, and turkey wings fundraiser sponsored by the Biddings and Mitchell families in honor of these two ladies. And that will be held on March 23rd at 11 a. M., from 11 a.m. until 3 p.m. And it's gonna be, uh, it gives a location here. So if anyone is interested in ordering barbecue turkey legs, um, Turkey wings. Uh, I have the announcement here. The kitchen committee will meet today immediately after service in the choir room. From inside your bulletin, noon Bible study, Wednesdays 12 p.m. Next Zoom Bible study will be Wednesday, which is this coming Wednesday, March 20th at 7 p.m. And I've also listed the Bible reading that we will be going over, which is Michael chapter 2. Missionary Circle meeting will be Saturday, March 23rd at 10.30 a.m. Church conference will be Saturday, March 23rd at 11 a.m. Resurrection Day sun breakfast, Sunday school, and worship service. And communion will be served, and that will be on Sunday, March 20, um, 31st at 9 a.m. And Reverend Johnson, there were questions about whether we were going to have service in the basement or are we going to come? We're going to have breakfast and Sunday school in the basement and we will come upstairs to have more worship service and communion. And that starts at 9 a.m. Do we have anyone celebrating a birthday from last Monday through today? If so, would you please stand? Birthday and or anniversary. Our thought for today, when we withhold forgiveness, everything that comes from our mouth will be tainted with bitterness. This will conclude the announcements for this morning. Thank you. Thank you, my sister, for those announcements. We pray that you govern yourselves accordingly. Um, I just want to talk about the fifth Sunday, March 31st. Since we don't ordinarily have church on fifth Sunday, this is something unusual for us. But we want to make it that Extra, extra special because this Resurrection Sunday and uh, we plan to have breakfast Sunday school and church service plus communion uh, if there's no other day of the year where we ought to glorify God it's Resurrection Sunday um, so I wanted to put out there that the Sunday school lesson uh, is entitled The Resurrection of Jesus. It's going to come from Luke chapter 24, verses 1 through 12 and 30 through 35.
So those who don't have a Sunday school book, you'll be able to find it and be able to have looked over those verses of scripture before you get here so that we can have a good discussion. Um, we had visitors last Sunday uh, and uh, the preacher of the hour's wife was impressed and she t told the superintendent, tell the Sunday school students that she really enjoyed the Sunday school. And that's one of the things I really want to push that when you come to Sunday school, you get an opportunity to just chime in. And uh, that's the same way we do on uh, Wednesday at noon and Wednesday night. We are able to chime in and get those things, beat those things out that we don't understand or we had questions about. So we enjoy Sunday school together because we're able to get the opinions of everybody in who's willing to talk. So it's going to come from Luke 24, 1 through 12, 30 through 35. Then it's got some related scriptures, but I want to make sure you know those when we get here. And we've got two capable teachers. I don't know which one has decided to do the Sunday school lesson that day, or is it going to be a tag team? Is it going to be a tag team? All right, all right. We're going to have both of them t discussing this lesson on, on that Sunday. So we, we ask that you come, and we're going to have breakfast. I'm meeting with the uh, kitchen committee today to get everything settled. So come have your breakfast and, and fellowship with us as we go over the Resurrection Sunday service. Amen. For those who like to get to the scripture early, we're in Mark chapter 14, verses 1 through 9 today. Mark 14, 1 through 9. And I've chosen a topic preparing for a self prepared for mm, I might have to take a drink of water. Preparing for a celebration. Preparing for, for a celebration. And uh, the, the uh, scriptures, uh, Mark chapter 14, 1 through 9. Preparing for a celebration. The choir is going to give us a pre message song. We're going to come back with that word.
Mark chapter 14, 1 through 9. After two days was the feast of the Passover and of unleavened bread. And the chief priest and the scribes thought how they might take him by craft and put him to death. But they said, not on the feast day, lest there be an uproar of the people. And being in Bethany in the house of Simon the leper, as he said at meat, there came a woman having an alabaster box of ointment of spikenard, very precious, and she broke the box and poured it on his head. And there were some that had indignation within themselves and said, why was this waste of ointment made? For it might have been sold for more than 300 pence and have been given to the poor. And they murmured against her. And Jesus said, let her alone. Why trouble ye her? She hath wrought a good work on me. For ye have the poor with you always. And whensoever ye will, ye may do them good. But me you have not always. She has done what she could. She has come aforehand to anoint my body to the burying. Verily I say unto you, wheresoever this gospel shall be preached throughout the whole world, this also that she has done shall be spoken of for memorial of her. Amen. Amen. Preparing for a celebration. Father, it's once more I stand before your people. I ask that you remove Wayne out of the way. Use this time to speak that they might hear what you have for them this day. Yes. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Preparing for a celebration. As we prepare ourselves to celebrate the resurrection of Jesus Christ, I wanted to look back at to what was happening during this time before his crucifixion. And I find that Jesus was going about still doing those things that he said that his father had sent him to do. Amen. He came preaching and teaching and healing and delivering. And even in the face of death, Amen. he never let anything sway him from doing what the father had sent him to do. When I looked at these scriptures today, I find that they were preparing for the Passover and for the Feast of Unleavened Bread. The Passover celebrated <clears throat> them coming out of Egypt, the miracles that God had done to bring them out of Egypt, the crossing of the Red Sea, the fire by night and the cloud of pillars by day, the, the feeding of the quails and the feeding of all of those people with so few and then there was the feast of the leavened bread. And it spoke of how they had to do it in a hurry. How they had to prepare their meal before they departed Egypt. They didn't have time for the bread to rise. So they didn't put leaven in it. So those two uh, ceremonies were being prepared for. But think about this. While the priest, the Levites and the uh, Sadducees and the Pharisees should have been preparing for this feast to celebrate the miracles of God, Come on. they had gotten together to talk about this man named Jesus. Yeah. Because as if we did in the Sunday school lesson today, he had raised Lazarus from the dead. Mm -hmm. And they had been trying to send different ones out and follow him around to try to catch him in some saying that they could use against him. But now he has raised a man from the dead and they were like, what are we gonna do now? So they thought they could get him by trickery and get him. But they said, we gotta do something with him. And they said, but not on the feast day. Now think about this now. 
Here they are supposed to be the holy people. They were the ones who were supposed to be leading people to God. And they were behind the scenes plotting and planning on how to destroy a man who had just created one of the, the, the miracles they never could do by raising from somebody from the dead. What does that say to me? Sometimes even when we do good, there's going to be somebody who's going to have something bad to say about it. Here they were uh, plotting and planning to take a man's life who had fed 5,000, had, had raised up two or three from the dead. Jared's his daughter. And the, the boy on the way to the cemetery, he stopped the funeral and raised him from the dead. But see, those could be explained away. Well, they just died, but they didn't fully die. They, they, their spirit could have entered back into them. But wait a minute, he, he's done one that's been dead for four days. Yes. Yes. And his body had started to smell. So you can't say he just fainted. No, he calls a dead man. And the dead man answered and walked out. So we got to do something with him. He's dangerous. And I think about us. Us as a people. Why are we so dangerous? We look at our history. Yeah. We find out that we have gone through a lot of things similar yeah. to the Jewish people. Yeah. We've been called all kinds of names, yeah. told we were all kinds of animals. Yeah. But because we've been blessed by God yeah. to do so many things yeah. that others feel that we are dangerous. Yeah. You often wonder why. Do they hate you so much? It's because the hand of God has been on you. And we as a people have got to realize where God has brought us through. So I'm preparing for a celebration because God has been too good to me to not raise my voice and lift my hand and say, this is what the Lord has done. But they were afraid of an uproar. Mm -hmm. We better not do it. We better not do it on the feast day. Mm -hmm. Them people love the feast. Mm -hmm. That's just like if we do something on uh, Resurrection Sunday while we have that breakfast going on. People love to eat now. But if we do something that calls them not to enjoy that meal, they love to say, crucify him, crucify him. So they said, no, we can't do it in that time. But while I was studying, I came across this information that the Passover and the Feast of Unleavened Bread were two separate feasts, but they were held at the same time. If you go back to Leviticus yeah. chapter 23, verse yeah. 4 and 8 through 8, yeah. Yeah. the Passover was supposed to be done on the 14th day. Yes. And the Feast of Unleavened Bread was supposed to be on the 15th day. Yes. The, the Feast of Unleavened Bread was supposed to be seven days long. Mm -hmm. And the first day and the seventh day were to be high days, which meant Sabbath. A high Sabbath. Mm -hmm. And I often wonder, you know, people always want to question how when we talk about he rose in three days, when if he died on Wednesday, how did he get uh, on, on, you know, think about it. Their calendar was different from ours. Amen. Then you throw in a floating high Sabbath. Mm -hmm. So when they said we got to get ready for the Sabbath, maybe they weren't talking about the regular calendar Sabbath. But maybe the high Sabbath yeah. that fell in there. Yeah. So they got ready for that Sabbath. Come on. And another Sabbath was coming too. Right. So many people want to dispute what the word of God says. But if you go deep enough, you'll find out that there's an explanation to everything that he said. Yeah. 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 When I think about what God has done, and in this verse of scripture, it talks about this woman coming in. Mm -hmm. 
with an alabaster box. Yeah. And she came to anoint him. Come on. And the disciples saw the value. Mm -hmm. And they put more value on the alabaster box and its contents than on Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. But she came because her value was on the one who had saved her. Yeah. And I got to wonder, sometimes do we put value on things that God counts as nothing and cause conflict in the church? Mm -hmm. I, I, you know, we got so many things that we do in the church that has been traditional. Come on, man. That if you ever go to change it, yeah. oh, you've broken the commandment. Yeah. Yes, right. But what does God say? God tells us that we ought to love one another. Yeah. We ought to look beyond each other's faults and see the need in others. Yeah. So when I saw this woman come in and they talked about her, it made me think. The scripture said, Jesus said that she has done what she could mm -hmm. for me. Mm -hmm. What have you done for him? What have you done for him? You know, we, we have all these different things that we can do. And I often have thought on, what can I do to make people come to Jesus? And I've come to realize there's nothing I can do. He has made it plain and simple. Just preach the gospel. Tell them about me. And I wonder, because it's so simple, do people reject it? We find other things to do to help people. We, we set up foundations to help educate people. We think that's going to make them better. We, we, we set up hospitals. You know, we do all these different things trying to help people. But helping them to be smarter doesn't really help. We can make some smart devils. You know, what, 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 do, what do we really need to do? You know, we've got some people in high places that don't know anything about Jesus. Amen. They have lived their whole lives around the church, mm -hmm. but never been a part of the church. Amen. And now we've gotten to this place in life right now where we got people who think that they can fight for God in the body instead of in the spirit. Amen. That's where all of this hatred is coming from. They think that, oh, God has assigned me to take up the battle axe, and I'm going to go and I'm going to knock down everybody who doesn't believe like me. But he didn't tell you that. He told you to go out and love people. Go out and give aid to somebody. You think about it. He walked around preaching and teaching, feeding, giving health to people. And he did it so that they could see that the Father was working through him. Amen. So I don't want to take credit for anything. I want to be always pointing out that God did it. Amen. No matter what I get, no accolades, the right word, no, I don't want that. Mm -hmm. I want you to point to God and say, because God lives, I can live. Because God lives, I can face tomorrow. When I think about this woman bringing the very best that she had, one, one in Luke uh, 37, they called her a sinner. This woman came in among those who were there. Mm -hmm. and said, the sinner came in. Mm -hmm. And the other, there was Pharisees in there, and they were wondering, what is this woman doing here among this teacher? Mm -hmm. Does he not know that this woman is a sinner? Come on. Don't we know that we all are sinners Amen. saved by grace? Amen. 
So why would I think I need to point my finger at any of you? What are they saying? When you point it that way, three pointing back at you? I got to first look at myself and, and understand that because of what he did for me, I can't look down on you. I got to show you what his love did for me. That what sin I was in, he was able to turn me around and put my feet on solid ground. Preparing to celebrate or for celebration. As I prepare myself for a celebration, I think about it <laughs> every Saturday evening as I'm preparing to come here on Sunday morning. I got to make sure I'm right. And, and some things happen all along the day that want to distract me from getting here, okay? I have to laugh at my wife. We were there in the living room. See, she won't tell all these stories on her. <laughs> we, we were there in the living room, and I've got my gospel music going. I'm, I'm, I'm into it. And I hear her singing. She's over at the dining table. She's singing along with the music. After a while, I hear, ow! <laughs> There is something about her singing that my cat doesn't like. <laughs> this is the second time. She was singing along with the Temptations one night a week or so ago. And the cat was at the foot of the bed. And she was singing, I don't know, one of those songs, Temptations. The cat. Funny, and came on up there. Now I'm laying this here, and she's over here, and she's singing, and I'm looking at the TV. And the cat looked up. <laughs> he got so upset he bit me. <laughs> so there's going to be distraction <laughs> when you're trying to get close to God. But you got to prepare yourself. Because this war is not against flesh and blood. But it's a spiritual warfare. Now, I'm going to have to have a, 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 a what do you call it? Uh, where you can take the holy water and splash on the canvas. <laughs> but there's something about distractions that will try to keep you. The closer you try to get to him, yeah. There's going to be distractions. Yes, you know, and, and while we're sitting there singing the gospel music, I'm, I'm trying to get my mind straight. And I hear this owl. And I'm, what in the world? And she's kicking at the cat. But I got to, I got to understand. The devil is busy. Amen. He don't want you to get no closer. <laughs> and if he comes after the preacher or the preacher's wife, you can bet he come after you too. <laughs> so you got to put what where am I being? Got to put on the whole armor. Got to put on the whole armor of God and prepare yourself to celebrate. You know when when I, like I said, I, I like to. And, and as we come down the road here, I, I, I got my phone, I put it on the gospel songs I want to hear, and I'm coming on down the road. And sometimes she might want to hear something else, but I'm tuning in, and I got these here hearing aids now, we can hook to, to my phone. So I, I get my own little selection of songs to get my spirit right before I get here. Amen. So when I get here, one preacher told, told a story about how sometimes people would run to the pastor before he would preach with bad news. You don't want to hear no bad news <laughs> before you say, wait till after the service and come with that. But I'm preparing myself that when I get here, 
I can speak about the joy of the Lord. Amen. Because that's what we need. We need to know that though we go through trials in this life, there's going to be a better day. Amen. And as we celebrate the resurrection, it points to that great getting up day. Amen. When the Lord's going to come back. And he, he's not just going to call Lazarus. He's going to call all of us. Yeah. My children, get up. Yes. And we're all going to get up. We're going to beat him in the sky. Mm -hmm. So that's what we got to do. We got to prepare ourselves. Yeah. Because the enemy is preparing all along. Yeah. But like I said, because we have been a chosen people, you got to be aware. You got to suit up. And it calls on you being in the word of God. Because so many people out there have bits and pieces of the word. Yes. And they add and subtract what they want to add and subtract. Mm -hmm. And then they say, oh, it's, not, it's in the word. But they've taken so much out that you don't, you don't see the true word. But we need to get back to the true word of God. Yes. And yes. God came in flesh to die for us. Mm -hmm. And when he did, he set us free. You can be free from your sin today if you just give it all to Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 The choir's going to come with another selection. We'll come with the benediction afterwards. Oh Lord, oh Lord, I want you to move. I want you to move. I want you to move from church to church, and I want you to move from man to man. Oh Lord, oh Lord, I want you to move. I want you to move. Oh Lord, oh Lord, I want you to move. I want you to move.
the Lord to move. Yes. Yes. We're living in times when it's going to take the hand of God to yes. move some of these things that are in our yes. way. Yes. Let us stand together <laughs> as we prepare to leave this place. We ask you to keep our sick and shut in in your prayers. Um, sister, how's Alicia? Is she home? She's still in the hospital? Okay. In and out. In and out, in and out the hospital. Um, uh, what's her name? Alicia? Stand back. Stand back. Put her name on your list when you pray. Um, young girl, young lady that's been in and out of the hospital. And uh, for all those that we have on our sick and shut-in list, we pray that God will be with them in their time of trouble. Let us go to God. Father, it's in the name of Jesus that we come right now. Thanking you for all your many blessings, for allowing us to gather one more time here at this place, Father. We ask now that you would be with us as we prepare to leave, but not leave your presence, Father. We pray that you would go from heart to heart and breast to breast, that you would be with us and keep us and help us to show the world that you are alive and well and live in us, Father. Bless us now. Now unto him who is able to keep you from falling. His love, his joy, go with you henceforth, now and forever. In the name of Jesus we pray, amen. Amen. God bless you.